to take time for some private class with you about quantum grammar. I have been following you long enough to understand many questions that I had. Most of these questions have been answered through your videos. I'm glad uh, my channel has brought you some closure as to your questions. As for planning to take private classes with me, um, if I had a so uh, an ounce of silver for every time I heard that I wouldn't even be on YouTube right now. So remains to be seen. Thanks for the comment. Another one from Ali Elim Tanta, and they say, "Hello, Jason. I would like to ask you if I dedicate two hours a day, five days a week, to studying correct sentence structure, how long will it take me to finish?" Although I am aware that each person is unique, I would only be polite to know how long it usually takes to become proficient mechanics and be able to utilize it in another language, given that I am from Netherlands. So they're saying that they would only be polite to know. So they're telling me they're being polite. Interesting. I don't see the word please anywhere in their comment here. But I digress, you know. If English isn't their first language, then uh, a lot can get lost when they're trying to say what they're going to say, especially if they're using Google Translate or something like that. I did answer this question in the comments, and I did come up with a hard number. But let's put it this way. If it took me about a year studying literally 10 to 12 hours every day for about a year to learn this. A very intense study, not only studying on my own, but being tutored one-on-one -on -one workshops, classes, communications with a tutor. And it took me about a year. It took me over 2,000 hours to even begin to start using it, and I didn't even have closure after that, then how long do you think it would take someone studying two hours a day, five hours a week, if it took me 10 to 12 hours a day for an entire year, seven days a week? You may be from the Netherlands, so maybe your math skills are better than mine, probably, so you can do that math. Next comment comes from Cheryl Cowan. And they say, did you try to help others or hinder them? Jesus love, dude. Jesus love. Do you live in Russia or Norway? Interesting. Um, I don't quite know what to make of this. Did you, and by you, I'm guessing they mean me, try to help others or hinder them? Well, me publishing about a thousand free videos on YouTube hopefully help people, those thousand videos. I don't know how many videos you've published on YouTube, but I guess it's up to the viewer as to whether they perceive whether these thousand videos help or hinder them. Now that's a choice. But my volition is clear. I do have a fate writ volition claim. Written in correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, with all the correct banking mechanics, postal mechanics, flag mechanics, and grammar mechanics. And my volition is 
to be a positive force, to help where it's needed and where it does not hinder me or my biosphere to do so. So, there's your answer, I guess. It's for the other part. Jesus love, dude. Jesus love. I don't know Jesus. Never met Jesus. Um, just like I've never met Gandalf or Frodo or Captain Kirk or Santa Claus or any of those individuals. But if Jesus loved dude, I mean, he can do what he wants, you know. If he's into dudes, that's his choice. Again, contract is by consent. <laughs> I don't know really what what else to say. Oh, do you live in Russia or Norway? Nah. No, I don't. I'd like to, though. Next comment comes from Peace Love Family. And they say, Hello, Jason. Your videos would help me understand correct sentence structure. I got to stop right there. I know a lot of folks into the alternative media and language and things like that. They use this word, understand. I don't get it. Some people say, outer stand, inner stand, understand. Why? Overstand? Why, what's the difference? Why don't you just say cognize? And Or you could just say, if you're using plain, simple English in brackets, understand. I know what you mean by that. But some people don't want to stand under something. They'd rather stand inside it. So if you have understand, they think they're standing under something. If you have understand, now you're standing in something. Hey, yo. Again, it's by consent. If that's, that's what you want to do, coo. As long as it's consensual. Thank you for your free videos, which gives more clear explanation how the grammar works. Just become a member to learn more. We we'll connect to you when I'm ready. Oh, well, welcome to the membership. Uh, I hope you find the dozens and dozens and dozens of members only videos to be helpful on your journey, as well as the thousand or so free videos in the public domain. Which, if you have watched those videos, all of them, kudos to you and thank you. Next comment comes from Michelle Cardenas. And they say, thank you, Jason, for what you have displayed here. I appreciate what you are teaching. Thank you very much. I appreciate your viewership. I am super interested in learning this from you. I have checked out a few others that are also teaching it. From what I have seen, you by far teach the facts with closure that I am able to overstand. Remember what I just said in uh, the last comments. I just wanted to give you a shout out to LYK. I'm guessing let you know how much these videos are clearly showing me your knowledge as well as helping me learn. As soon as I find some time to dedicate myself to wholeheartedly learning this, I will be contacting you. Until then, I'll be watching your channel with gratitude. Well, thank you very much and gratitude for you watching and your viewership. And I know you've been a, a viewer of this channel for a while now. I, I do recognize your writing style and I do recognize the name. So I appreciate your viewership and whenever you're ready to go, just email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and we'll go from there. Thank you. Next comment comes from Hulu2, another actually very, very long time viewer. And actually, Hulu2, just to preface this, or pre-qualify it or whatever you want to say, Hulu2 has actually been a very, 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 very good friend of mine for many, many years. Not just an internet friend either. I know them in person, in, in real life. So... This is always love hearing what they have to say. Your observations most certainly are not limited to correct sentence structure, as someone may interpret it to be yielding, of which I make no claim to have closure on. Seems to me 
a natural, necessary, and honorable function in relationship building. And that's stated from observing my yet unschooled three-and-a-half-year-old. Our relationship flows with absolutely no indication of, nor hint of, an identity crisis. However, already rough road ahead if she is handed over to the school system or compulsory, competitive, institutional indoctrination, as it is correctly named, where such products people are created in mass. At the end of a skinny book named Deschooling Society, the clinician's last line in the book, I believe, was, at all costs, remove your children from these systems. I'm fairly certain the crux of why being the topic, the crux of being, the crux of why being the topic you discussed. Let's chew on that for a minute. Let's unpack that, folks. What they're saying my perception of what Hulu 2 is saying is that they have a three and a half year old child and they're a little bit concerned about enrolling them in the compulsory public school system because folks at least in North America if you don't do that if you don't register your child in the public school system there are legal consequences. Now, there are ways to deal with this if you so choose to. Ways to not put your child there. But in doing so, you must also be able to provide a continuance of the evidence that you are more than capable of educating the child yourself. That you have the time to do that and the resources to do that. And not only that, there are still what we will call fiction system standards that you must abide by during that home schooling. Now, the, how you want to say it, the, uh, the domain is very, is less stringent. I mean, face it, folks, you put someone in a public school or even a private school these days, what's the difference between the public school system in a prison, not much, not much difference, not at all. A lot of them have uniforms, dress codes you have to wear. You have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom if you want to go to the bathroom. Um, you have limited outside time, maybe a half hour at lunchtime. You get to go outside and play, maybe. Um, you have to take lunch at a certain time. There's no... Uh, there's no, um, you, let's put it this way. It's a very authoritarian construct. You got to do what you're told when you're told to do it. You have to ask permission to do everything. And you have to be there from this time to that time. And it, it's very similar to the prison system. So as a parent, there are ways to go around that. It just takes a lot of, they make it very difficult to do that. Let's put it that way. Especially parents who are trying to provide value, food, keep a roof over their family's head, so on and so forth. It's very hard to do that. Um, So another alternative would be to, you can put your child in that system, but also alongside as they're going through that system, you provide education when they're outside the system because that will also give them experience and socialization skills that will serve them very well down the road. Hopefully, hopefully. Like, well, one thing I can say for myself is that I was in Catholic school from grade kindergarten until sixth grade. And then when seventh grade, I went to the public school, which was very scary for me because I went from a class of about 20 children that I would knew and was familiar with to going to like five or six or seven different classes with different children that I didn't know, 25 to 30 children in each class being set loose in a scenario with a bunch of people I didn't know of all different grades. And yes, I got bullied. And uh, that's where I had to sink or swim. Um, I either had to fight back or continue to be a victim. I chose the former. And I did it in such a fashion that no one messed with me ever again, really. And that's developed my love of martial arts and learning to fight. 
And the interesting thing is, folks, interesting thing is, is the more I learned to fight, the more I did boxing, jujitsu, wrestling, Muay Thai, uh, all the different uh, things that I got involved with, the less I got into street fights. Go figure. Now, some have a good experience in school as compared to what usually are usually my thoughts. The system's negative impact upon a natural yielding function of a relationship building has left most who have been subjected to it for 15,000 hours deficit in said function ability. The clinicians who have studied this dysfunctional system have consensus on that order, so it seems. Again, good message and great topic. And or FFT. I'm not sure what FFT means. Sorry about that, folks. Um, the system's negative impact yielding upon a naturally yielding function of relationship building. Oh, okay. I think I think what they're saying there is that it's sort of it can corrupt the yielding function because what what they're referring to is a video I did about yielding. How in any relationship there's yielding, and there is. Not necessarily anything negative about yielding, especially if it's done with humility. But it can be negative if you're yielding through coercion or fear, which is what would happen in the school system. Or if you join the freaking military or prison, uh, it's through fear. You don't want to be reprimanded. You don't want to be thrown in the brig. You don't want to be beat up. You don't want to be physically harmed. You don't want to be isolated, thrown into isolation. I mean, what do they do in school when you, when, when you, when you get in trouble? They give you, what, detention, suspension. They separate you. They put you in the corner, put you in timeout, whatever it is they do. It's the same thing. Hello, folks. When I was a senior in 1990... My senior year, I had accrued hundreds of detentions, hundreds of detentions. Literally, they told me that I would not graduate high school unless I served these detentions. So, so they said, if you come every Sunday for an hour, every weekend until the end of school, we will wipe the slate clean and... You can graduate. I said, okay, fine. I'll be there. I never showed up. A couple weeks, it took them to catch up, and then they were like, hey, you didn't show up. So if you come for three Sundays in a row for a half hour each, we'll call it even. I said, okay, okay, I'll show up. I never showed up. So it came time to the last Sunday of the school year, They said, if you come in for 30 minutes, we'll wipe those 100 detentions off your record and you'll be able to graduate. Otherwise, we're not going to let you graduate. I said, okay, I'll be there. Guess what? I showed up. I walked in. I looked at the teacher and I said, I got to go. I got something to do. And the teacher said, okay. And they marked me down as present and everything was good. I honestly think if I wouldn't have showed up, I'd have still been able to graduate because I don't think they can do that. Either which way, though, I was not uh, i was not the model compulsory student. C-J-M-S-K-I-E-Z says, colon, let, let me read this. Let me read this out verbatim as I would read it as if someone were trying to write correct sentence structure as this individual was trying to do. For the for the thankfulness of this claimant with the of the CJK is with the receiving of the teaching lesson and with the continuation of the learning by the guidance of the correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar performance for the closure of the knowledge in the now space. Now, let's go through and point out the errors because this, and this individual, if it's who I think it is, has been studying for years. And this is what happens when you don't 
get a correct base of knowledge, of correct sentence structure knowledge. This is what happens. Because this person has been doing it for years. They even have a website, I'm pretty sure. So you have a colon and in for the. Why would you put a colon in front of for the? What is a colon? They don't know what a colon is. Otherwise, they wouldn't do things like this or things like this. A colon represents a position lodial phrase. If it comes at the beginning of the sentence, it represents for the. So you don't need to put a colon for the because it says for the for the. Now it's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. The next mistake. They put more than, one, more than two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. Here's the verb. You have one position lodial phrase right here with the colon. You have another one here for the, that's two. Of this, that's three. Claimant, you have a colon, that's another one, four. Then you have one in front of the C, that's five. Completely 100% incorrect. And then they put another one in here, even though there's no space, but they put another one in here. So that's six. Then they have is, and they follow is with possessive. That is correct. And then they have a particle of negation, ing. Not only that, they have the re, which is the most basic particle of negation taught. Even Russell J. Gould says this in every se uh, seminar. Receive means no seat. And yet, here they are using it, which is very interesting. Given the amount of time, if this is the individual I'm thinking of, has been studying, supposedly studying. Of the teaching lesson, again, ing, particle negation, and with the, so they have of the and then with the after the conjunction, that is incorrect because the conjunction, the position lodial phrase that comes on the port side of the conjunction must be the same position lodial phrase that comes on the starboard side of the conjunction, and so this is incorrect. And then we have another particle negation in the fact, and then they put the authority in the middle of the sentence. The authority always comes at the end. Cause, authority. So that when you flip them, the authority becomes the cause, the cause becomes the authority. That's the mathematical interface or part of it. This individual has no clue about that. And then they follow that with an of the, um, and then they put a cause at the end. So they have two causes, one at the beginning and one sort of at the end. And then they end the sentence with the I-N, which is not one of the four positionals. You have four of, with, and by. Those are the four positionals. In correct sign structure, one and one is one. So four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. One function, one meaning, one congruency. Where's in? So if you read that backwards, what's it become? Out the now space? How could you be in the now space and out the now space? So whoever you are, CJM, if you are who I think you are, after years and years of study, um, really, I would have guessed that uh, you'd have done a little bit better. But don't think I'm being harsh on you. I mean, it's up to you whether you actually want to learn this stuff or not. Thank you for the comment. Next one comes from Peace Love Family, and they say, gratitude to use. When I see that, I know where they come from. Question mark. How do we correct a contract with the bank? Something one had signed and realized it was a mistake afterwards. How do you correct anything? Since you're using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, and you don't have closure on correct sentence structure, you would have to do it through the fiction system. Um, one way you could go to the bank and say, hey, I made a mistake. Um, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And do it that way. It's very simple. I mean, contract is by consent. But if you say correct a contract, I don't know what you mean by that because... I'm taking it to mean you're doing it in the fiction system because you don't know correct sentence structure. If you're going to use correct sentence structure to use a grammatically correct contract with the bank, then the bank or the individual you are actually contracting with would have to have a live life claim and also be knowledgeable of correct sentence structure. So 
That that's a tough road to hoe, bro. My advice: learn the grammar. Quit messing around. Get serious. There's an email address you can use. And the last one comes from Faze Croat. And they say, this is French to me. Looks like learning English all over. And, I mean, that's absolutely fine because some of my best students, English is not their native tongue. It's not their first language. And they do very well. So it's all up to you if you want to do the work and learn it. It uh, It's very rewarding. If not, enjoy the videos and thank you for the comments.